Welcome back to Domain 4 of the Security Plus Exam Cram Series 2024 edition. And here in Section 4.2, we'll discuss the security implications of hardware, software, and data asset management. We'll begin with a discussion of the responsibilities that come with asset ownership before walking through the security implications of the asset lifecycle, beginning with classification and inventory, tracking that asset throughout its useful life, before we wrap with a discussion of appropriate and timely retirement and disposal of that asset. An often overlooked but very important topic in security, let's dig in. Welcome back to Domain 4 of the Security Plus Exam Cram Series 2024 edition. And here in Section 4.2, we're going to focus on asset management. More specifically, the syllabus challenges us to explain the security implications of proper hardware, software, and data asset management. We'll step through the entire asset lifecycle from acquisition and procurement to assignment and accounting, where we determine who owns the asset and what is its proper classification. Moving on then to monitoring and tracking. How do we enumerate our assets, take inventory periodically over time, and make sure we are maintaining the security of those assets before we wrap with a discussion of appropriate disposal and decommissioning. And there's certainly some nuance to unpack there when it comes to disposal of hardware versus disposal of data. So we're talking about what you should be doing at each phase and why those activities are important to security. So let's start with a definition of the core concept here. What is the asset management lifecycle? In short, it's the process of tracking your valuable assets throughout their useful life, including hardware, software, and data. And the key activities at the highest level are called out in the syllabus, acquisition and procurement, then assignment and accounting, on to monitoring and tracking before disposal and decommissioning. And we'll dig into the activities at each of those phases, the importance of those activities, and the security concerns at each phase of the life cycle. And then there's the overall goal of the asset management life cycle. Asset management is about minimizing the risk of unauthorized access, data disclosure, modification, or destruction of an organization's assets. So stated very simply, asset management is about keeping track of your stuff and making sure it's secure. And by keeping track of everything we have, we can make sure it's all safe from getting stolen, changed, or lost, only letting the right people access what they need because we're classifying that asset and implementing least privilege access. We know when things are outdated and need fixing or replacing or patching and we get rid of things we don't need anymore without leaving any sensitive information behind. So let's get into the details of the life cycle here, beginning with acquisition and procurement. Acquisition and procurement defines how assets enter the organization, and a secure process verifies vendors' reputations and ensures valid licensing for our software. For example, we're checking for valid licenses to avoid pirated software, and we're making sure there are no major security incidents around that vendor that we can't live with, that they didn't respond to in an appropriate manner. Because vendors with poor security practices increase our risk. And from a hardware perspective, we're establishing baseline configurations for hardware that we're onboarding to the organization. And that would include installing a secure operating system with the latest security patches. Many times with your hardware vendors, we can establish a golden image that they can apply to the hardware before it's shipped to us. So we may have that secure baseline configuration already in place, and all we have to do is apply the latest security patches. But our concerns here would include malware-infected hardware, so basically infected OS or firmware from an untrusted vendor, which can introduce vulnerabilities, but also unauthorized software or counterfeited licenses can lead to a lack of security updates, potentially legal implications, but leaving us exposed. Then we move into assignment and accounting. So here we have to define ownership. So who is responsible for the asset? That could be a person, a department, or a team, but we need to pin down who 
owns this asset and is responsible for its care and feeding and tracking. Classification, which categorizes assets based on sensitivity. So are these assets handling confidential financial data, public marketing material? So we certainly have to classify our data, but our assets, our hardware assets, should be secured at the same level as the data that those assets are used to access. So a workstation that's accessing confidential financial data should be secured like it is itself confidential financial data. The importance of this phase is proper assignment and classification ensure appropriate access controls and security measures are implemented. So this classification and accounting of ownership immediately after onboarding allows us to address one of our most important security concerns, and that's unauthorized access to sensitive information and assets. If we give an employee access to customer data they don't have a need for, that can lead to data breaches. And that brings us to the next phase, monitoring and asset tracking. So in this phase, we're thinking about inventory, maintaining an accurate record of all assets, including the type, the location, and the owner. Typically, inventory is going to be tracked in a configuration management database, commonly referred to simply as the CMDB. Enumeration is a process where we regularly identify and document all assets on the network. So we're certainly going to have some physical inventory processes, which we'll talk about in a moment, but here's where I might go through processes to scan my network for new devices. I might perform periodic vulnerability scans to see what concerns I have from a security perspective about that asset. So the importance here is that we enable asset tracking for its location, its status, and any potential vulnerabilities. We can't secure assets we don't know about, and knowing where assets are located allows for faster response to security incidents as well. So our overriding security concern here is that unknown or untracked assets create security blind spots, increasing the risk of breaches. An attacker might exploit an unmonitored device to gain access to the network. I want to take a sidebar with you here and talk about how we track physical assets. So this hardware asset management process is one where each asset belonging to the company has been tagged and recorded in an asset register, and we maintain an up-to-date asset register to ease the process of tracking and maintaining assets. That might be a simple spreadsheet, relatively unsophisticated, or it may be a proper configuration management database, that CMDB, where we're tracking all sorts of metadata. Like the owner, like the classification, a planned retirement date for that hardware. Most of our hardware is going to have something of a three to five year life cycle, depending on the vendor you're working with. This process will include periodic audits, usually annual audits, that need to be carried out to ensure all assets are accounted for. And we'll add physical asset tags with barcodes or QR codes often, which allows for quick scanning and identification during that inventory process. And many times you'll have a scanner for that barcode or QR code that will allow you to scan it and it's automatically connected to the CMDB in that scanner software. So a scan of the device with a little gun or wand result in an automatic update to the CMDB. And this process can help identify unauthorized devices on the network. Anything we don't catch in a scan. In a network scan, that is. Okay, so back to our life cycle. And that brings us to the final phase here, which is disposal and decommissioning. So in the final phase, we have sanitization, which ensures data removal from storage devices before disposal or recycling. Destruction, which physically destroys assets beyond recovery when necessary, and it ensures data is securely destroyed when necessary. The key phrase there being securely destroyed. More on that in a moment. Certification, which provides documented proof of secure disposal for compliance purposes. Very common when we're decommissioning hardware, we'll have a vendor who comes and picks up that asset and takes it back to a facility where they securely destroy that asset, and then they provide us a certificate that verifies it has been securely destroyed and through what means. But from a data retention perspective, we also have to define how long our data is kept based on legal or business needs. So what's the importance of all this? Well, the importance here is that improper disposal can lead to data leaks and privacy violations. 
deleted data should not be recoverable even with forensic techniques. And our data retention policies ensure compliance, but they also prevent unnecessary exposure of sensitive data being stored longer than required. As I mentioned earlier in the series when we were focused on data security, data that is kept longer than it is needed increases risk. So our security concerns here really involve residual data, making sure that we don't have residual data on disposed assets like incomplete data wiping or a failure to adhere to our data retention policies. We need to make sure we're retaining data where we need to, but we're not keeping that sensitive customer data or business data longer than necessary. Because if we don't have that unneeded data, it can't be stolen, it can't be leaked, it can't be demanded for production in discovery and litigation. So that is my version of the what and the whys of asset management and the implications to our security. And my friends, you've reached the end of section 4.2. I hope you're getting value from the series as always. If you have questions, leave them in the comments or reach out directly on LinkedIn. I'll look forward to seeing you back here for section 4.3 in the next day or two. And until next time, take care and stay safe.